Hi, I'm Steve Lowry, the editor of the Hilo. Today we are speaking with Valerie Burkholder of the Aquarium of the Pacific. Valerie's here to talk to us about something that's going on right now that is very cool, uh, almost mysterious and magical, the bioluminescence of the uh, Pacific Ocean that a lot of you may have seen on video or I don't know, maybe you were driving by and saw it. Frankly, it seems the the water is glowing and, and that fairies live in it or something like that. I'm sure that's probably not the scientific term for it, Valerie. Uh, Valerie, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me today. So what is going on right now in the ocean that is causing it to glow? Well, we are experiencing a bloom of bioluminescent plankton. Um, these are tiny single-celled organisms that create their own light. They're photosynthetic, so they, harn they harness the sun's energy, and they're able to turn it into light at nighttime when the sun is not shining. Anytime there are waves or a boat propeller or dolphins swimming through the ocean, um, they are stimulated to produce this flash of light. It's almost as a warning signal they use. Um, whenever the water around them is disturbed, they create this flash of light. So people are seeing it, and there was even a really cool video of dolphins swimming through the water. And as they swim through the water, they disturb it with their bodies. And these plankton that are all around them, they're in, almost invisible to our eyes, but they're everywhere right now. So they are creating those flashes of light. And there are so many of them that they're causing the water to look bright blue and almost light up everywhere around them. Valerie, does this happen with any kind of great regularity? It doesn't seem to. If it, if it, if it isn't like a normal, hey, it happens every summer kind of thing, what causes it to happen? Well... I have witnessed it only a few times in my life. It's usually in the spring or early summer, but it's kind of unpredictable. We never really know exactly when it's gonna happen, but it's probably in response to changing ocean conditions of the seasons. So we might've just experienced a raise in temperature of the water because we're experiencing uh, high temperatures of the air right now. So it's heating up the ocean too. Um, and we're probably experiencing a little bit more wind in some areas because of this temperature. So that's stirring up nutrients from the deeper ocean or from the shore. Um, and the nutrients are helping these plankton to grow because they actually are kind of like land plants where they require sunlight and fertilizer. So whenever the ocean conditions change like that, and we're also experiencing an increase in sunlight because of the seasons changing. So those conditions all mix together perfectly to create blooms of plankton. And blooms of plankton are pretty common. Um, they're a little bit seasonal like this. They can be anything from microscopic phytoplankton to large jellyfish. So this is just one of the more spectacular blooms of plankton that we're going to see throughout the year. And we're lucky enough to be able to observe it right off our coast right now. How long will, how long will this last probably? It will probably only last a few weeks because these conditions are always changing in the ocean. So as we get a little bit more towards summer, um, we'll see different ocean conditions. So that will bring different creatures and different blooms of plankton um, along with it. Now here in Long Beach, we're probably not going to get the more spectacular uh, kind of visuals, are we? We probably won't. Um, maybe at some of the beaches, especially with higher wave activity, we might be able to see it. Um, it kind of depends on the currents of the water. Most people have been witnessing it around Orange County and even around Oceanside and San Diego. But if the wind and the ocean currents move the water up here, they could move some of that plankton right into Long Beach because this is something that just shifts along with the ocean currents. And if there is wave action or if you're on a boat and the boat has a propeller or you're just moving through the water, you see dolphins swimming through the water, you might get a glimpse of it. Right now there's a video, uh, I think we'll have it attached to this story, of a boat in Newport Beach with two, two or three dolphins going through the water. And mm -hmm. it looks like something out of a, a movie, <laughs> like there's spirits <laughs> or something like that. It is absolutely magical. Have you seen that? Yeah, I have seen it. It is really amazing that someone was able to capture that video because it can sometimes be hard to get these low light shots at nighttime since it's only really visible at night. But that was a really spectacular video and it does look almost otherworldly. 
However, in the ocean, bioluminescence is pretty common. We're just getting a special up close and a very spectacular display of it right now, since this species of plankton is blooming so much right now that it's <sighs> completely filling up the water so much that anything moving through the water is going to set off those flashes of light. D d having to do with the other sea life, is this good, bad, or are they completely indifferent to it? Um, this might be fairly harmless. There are some forms of red tides, which are plankton blooms that are closely related to this species that can be harmless, that can be harmful. Um, so I'm not sure. There are many species of dinoflagellates, which is the organism responsible for this plankton bloom. And some of the species are incredibly toxic. And then some of them are perfectly harmless and can be eaten by a wide variety of creatures. So it's hard to tell which species this is right now. Um, we would have to take a sample of it, look at it under the microscope and identify it with a, a special guide for that type of organism. You actually could do that because you actually raise this type of algae at home, am I right? Yeah, I do. And the species that I raise is completely harmless. It's not a toxic species, so it doesn't produce any harmful toxins. Um, it does produce bioluminescence, which is really cool. So that's why I raised that species. And it's fairly easy to take care of. How, how do you do it? How do you start that process? Um, well, I to start, I order a starter culture from a company or a lab that produces that sort of thing, which will be a small jar. It looks like a jar of water, but under a microscope, it would contain thousands and thousands of these single-celled animals. And then um, I just split that starter culture into more and more containers. And um, the cells will multiply on their own. All I have to do is add the growth medium, which contains salt water with some nutrients in it to help them grow. And I have to expose them to light. So I just use the light from my window. I don't have any specific lights because um, they just need low light, not direct sunlight. Just like some of the plants that we grow at home, you don't want to put them in direct sunlight. Right. Um, because that would be harmful to them. And then I just let them do their thing. And and we have video of you actually with it and they're glowing and uh, it, mu it must be kind of cool to have that in your house. Yeah, it's lots of fun. So I can only see it at night, but as soon as it hits about seven o'clock PM, whenever I shake the bottles or the jars, um, all of the cells in there will light up and it'll look like blue glowing water, which is really, really cool. It's like growing your own lava lamp. Actually, it sounds yeah. a lot like when I was a kid, we used to have things called sea monkeys you'd send away for, and I think it was shrimp brine or something like that that you could put, yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Valerie, you, you obviously work at the aquarium. You live right next door in, in Harbor City. Um, mm -hmm. We ran a video, in fact, Stephen, uh, our engineer, uh, cut it for us, of what it's like now at the aquarium. It, it, it seemed both nice, the, the the sea life seemed to be getting along, but it also seemed mm -hmm. a little lonely. What's it like to work there these days? Well, my job is mostly the same. However, it's a little eerie without thousands of visitors there every day. Um, we're definitely not getting to show off our exhibits to the public as much right now. We still have webcams and everything where people can see them on the internet um, live streamed, but we it's a little bit eerie to walk through a completely empty aquarium as I'm going about my daily duties. I mean, I'm not used to that. I'm used to thousands of visitors being there every day, but my actual job is more or less the same right now. Um, I'm just there to feed the animals, to maintain the exhibits, um, keep the filtration working properly, um, clean the exhibits, scuba dive in them and everything. So, um, I'm still performing my normal job functions, but we just don't have anyone to come and see our exhibits right now, which hopefully will change pretty soon. It, it may sound silly, but is there are there any animals there that you sense that they sense things are different, like that that the environment is different? Yeah, we do see a lot of differences in animal behavior right now. Some of the animals enjoy the social contact with the public. Like I think our sea lions and our sea otters are a little bit confused because they're used to running around with the kids and chasing them back and forth through the tunnels and everything. 
some of the fish seem to be coming out a little bit more than usual because they don't have anything around them to scare them back into hiding or to alarm them. So we're starting to see a little bit different behaviors in all of our animals. It just depends on the species. Of course, my animals are mostly jellyfish. So since they don't see anything in their surroundings, they probably have no idea that there are less people. But I do feel a little sad that there's no one around to admire them right now. Well, we're going to be admiring this, you said, for a, a, probably a couple more weeks. We'll have bioluminescence. Yeah, I think it might last for a couple of weeks. As we get into summer, the ocean conditions will probably change again. So they will no longer be um, good for these animals as we get different temperatures in the water, um, different wind action. Usually plankton blooms are pretty short lived, even with large jellyfish and such. Um, they sometimes only last a couple of weeks out of the year because the ocean is very changeable. Um, it's always moving, it's always changing. It's almost like its own living, breathing organism. Mm. Well, we'll enjoy it while we have it. Please give our best regards to the jellyfish. Valerie, mm -hmm. thanks for coming by and explaining what's going on. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to be able to talk about these things with you guys. Thanks.